finally saw Deadpool the other day. Oh, what'd you think of it? To be honest, it was enjoyable overall, but the writing lacked a certain- Did you know that Deadpool is pansexual in that movie? What? No, he was with that girl and didn't show any indication of being gay. No, he's pansexual. The writer confirmed it. Ryan Reynolds confirmed it. Shut up. Next time you're gonna be telling me that Lando Calrissian is bisexual. But he... Stop. Fine. Although, Wonder Woman is definitely bisexual. What? It's been confirmed. Confirmed? Just like how Dumbledore was confirmed? Or, uh... Valkyrie from Thor Ragnarok, or LaFoe from Beauty and the Beast? Sulu? No, all this shit is just a capitalist cash grab to perpetuate a system of economic inequality. Here, just try They reading. can't keep getting away with it! Just try reading the Deadpool and Spider-Man team-up comic. Fine. How did they get away with the sequence where Spider-Man and Deadpool become certified members in the Mile High Club? Deadpool is a reoccurring character in the Marvel Universe, known for being witty, diabolical, gross, and overall not of sound mind. He was created as a parody of another character from DC called Deathstroke. Deadpool doesn't really take himself too seriously. His whole existence is basically a joke. We have a lot in common. But he ended up being a likable character, so he stayed around. Yep. He is in the Marvel canon. He's not some random what-if story from Earth-420. His existence may be a joke, but once you can make a bunch of white dudes a lot of money, you're worthy. <laughs> so, what's this guy's backstory? We don't know for sure, but according to Google, he was an army dude slash mercenary who got involved in some sketchy government stuff. He was diagnosed with cancer, and sketchy people from this sketchy program called Weapon X approached him with a cure. They experimented on him, eventually giving him healing powers. Like Wolverine! But it also makes him really ugly because I guess his cancer just kinda exists all over his face? I'm not really sure how it works. All this experimentation also took a huge toll on him mentally. So, for lack of a better word, he's unstable. He's been through a lot. Deadpool's significant other is Spider-Man. We all probably know who Spider-Man is. I mean, Spider-Man is like in a million different series and universes and stories. The rule is, the more merchandise, the more universes you're in. Remember, profit for rich white dudes. <laughs> the main story is that Peter Parker was your average pimply teenager in the 1960s. Bookworm, shuckworm. Or the, the 70s. Spider-Man! Or the 80s. or the depends on when you're reading this. He was then bit by a radioactive spider, which somehow gave him super spider powers? Spider-Man is the antithesis to Deadpool. While Deadpool is morally ambiguous, Spider-Man has a strict code, no killing. How do these opposites end up together? Moreover, how can people find any sort of connection between these two opposites? Let us not forget United States Legal Code Rule 7. <laughs> But maybe it's deeper than that. A lot deeper. Maybe it's something beyond them bickering that makes Tumblr go nuts for these men in red. Maybe it's the fact that they each give something to each other and turn out better in the end. Alex, this sounds like a crack ship. They don't even interact in the movies. And if it's not in the movies, then it's not for real. Can you just listen to what I have to say? No, it's ridiculous. Spider-Man is super straight, too. Like, I mean, he even married Mary Jane. We don't talk about one more day. Doesn't change the fact that Peter Parker is a red-blooded, heterosexual American. He has a job, he pays his taxes, he participates in an economic system that perpetuates the subjugation of one class over another. Brian, this is Marvel. They couldn't do the entire universe with a finger snap. They made Steve Rogers a Nazi. You don't think if they can play the secret Nazi card, they can play the secret bisexual card too? I don't know. I mean... We have to draw the line at Nazi, right? I mean, you're not telling me that the media is more okay with Nazis than bisexuals. Deadpool and Spider-Man have a long and complicated history, but it mostly starts out with Spider-Man hating Deadpool. 
off to a great start. Let's just say that they are properly first introduced in Cable Deadpool 24. This was back in 2006. Ah yes, the good old 2006. YouTube looked like this. Facebook looked like this. Bernie Sanders looked like this. Although, we still had an awful president that didn't win the popular vote. I guess old habits die hard. It's a hostile meeting, to say the least, since Spider-Man, or Peter, isn't a fan of the whole killing thing and Deadpool, or Wade, is infamous for not aliving people. Peter doesn't really like Wade, although Wade does comment on how cute Tobey Maguire is. Although Peter seems like the straight man of the relationship, he's not a brick wall. Spider-Man is known for his quips. Sometimes they have that sour, overused Marvel Studios quip flavor. I don't want to see this on your MySpace page. But Peter is supposed to be a funny guy. Their first few meetings aren't super eventful. It's mostly Deadpool making homoerotic jokes, commenting on how tight Spider-Man's suit is, treating Spider-Man like his knight in shining armor, usual comic book gibberish. You know, just occasional almost kiss moments. Some people say that Wade's just joking around, but it gets to the point where it gets too serious to joke about. In the beginning, Deadpool is hyper aware that Spidey Pool is a thing. While many comics take a subtle fourth wall breaking approach, Deadpool comics tend to take a more Kool-Aid man approach to the fourth wall. Wade is a self-described fanfic writer, Spidey Pool fan artist, and frequent user of Tumblr. The gay moments are not lost on Wade. If Deadpool is clinging onto Spider-Man's body, he'll be sure to tell everyone, listen, comics is like wrestling. It's the gayest straight thing ever. If you put a bunch of guys in tight spandex with boners for justice together, they're gonna have boners for something else. Behind Deadpool idolizing Spider-Man as every confused homosexual has idolized their childhood crushes, Wade really envies Spider-Man's sense of justice and morality. Maybe that's why he's so consistent on wanting to be Spider-Man's best friend. He wants to find any way to get close to Peter, and if that's dressing up in drag and inviting flirtation, that's just Deadpool's way I guess. Friends you say? We're more like lovers is Wade's reply. Wade handles Peter like a gentle goddess. I mean, we all know how frisky Zeus was. We eventually get Spider-Man to admit that they're kind of friends, and then take it back, and then admit they're friends, and then take it back, and then admit they're friends, and then take it back. But I promise, there's closure, kinda maybe. This relationship would just be a funny and cute blip if it weren't for the team-up comic. Oh, so many tears were shed over this comic. So at the end of Deadpool 19, Wade feels really shitty. Murdering people and having no sense of morality tend to do the job. Spider-Man calls Wade pathetic, and says that self-pity does no good. Eventually, this will embed itself into Wade. Spider-Man does a lot of embedding into Wade. We get these little glimpses of Wade trying to better himself, and we only get these glimpses when he's around Peter. Peter is helping him grow as a person. Before they become good friends, Wade has a messed up view of what goodness is. That goodness is only perception, but we'll see Spider-Man get under his skin. And his clothes and him. Imagine a graph. The closer Wade and Peter become, the better off Wade is. At the beginning of the team-up comic, Wade pleads to Spider-Man that he wants to learn to be good, and Spider-Man doubtfully accepts to help him. But Wade really is mostly doing this because Wade wants to get close to Spider-Man to get close to Peter Parker so he can kill Peter Parker, but Peter Parker just happens to be Spider-Man. But Wade doesn't know that. But Wade does think that Spider-Man and Peter are close friends. Because of how close Spider-Man and Peter are, Wade doesn't want to go through with killing Peter at the risk of hurting Spider-Man. I mean, he's not wrong. That would hurt Spider-Man, but he's also really wrong? Listen, secret identities are a semantical mess. The thing is, they end up becoming really good buddies. All this crime fighting together and wanting to do better makes them warm up to each other. Deadpool feels really attached. He almost doesn't want to go through with the hit on Peter. He's also learning what it takes to be good, and it would be a shame to mess with that. Deadpool at this point really cares about Spider-Man. For Pete's sake, <laughs> Peter is canonically his heartmate. No one seems to care, but Spider-Man is canonically Deadpool's heartmate. And Spider-Man starts seeing him as a friendish person, slash companion, slash Parasite. He was a friend of mine, you... you monster! Well, not a friend exactly. More of a nuisance, if you must know. But he was my nuisance! 
Despite Peter's coldness, Wade cares a lot of what Spider-Man thinks of him. When Spider-Man doubts him, Wade gets very... sad? Whatever, we're not friends. I mean, Deadpool seems almost jealous of Peter and Spider-Man's supposed relationship. Thanks, AP Literature. I know what dramatic irony is. Why does Peter get the trust pass when I don't? Of course, Spider-Man gives him a second chance, which Deadpool messes up immediately, but Peter is forgiving. Friendship's beautiful, man. I, I like the way that Peter carries him bridal style and they go visit Deadpool's daughter, and his daughter's like, Daddy talks about you all the time. Of all the guys in the world, the last person you'd expect to be serious and vulnerable is Wade Wilson. But here he is, trying to be good, and it has a lot to do with this one man, Toby Maguire. They get close enough to the point where they start doing bro stuff together. There's this one issue where they go clubbing. It's also the issue where it's revealed that Deadpool has a list of people his wife would allow him to give a special hug to. Guess who's number two? Thor. Oh, and Spider-Man's number five. But Wade is still tasked with killing Peter Parker, which he's hesitant about doing, which is a good sign. Being hesitant about killing the love of your life is probably a good sign. His wife asks if it's because of his bro crush. I mean, this is literally a romantic trope. It's called becoming the mask. A person pretends to be someone else, and they end up becoming that someone else. Deadpool was going to use Spider-Man to get close to Peter Parker, but he tragically ended up... Let me get my notes here. Falling in love with him. This is a greater love story than Richard Gere and the gerbil. Well, he goes through with killing Peter but realizes it was a mistake and goes back to the underworld or whatever to save him. Wade sacrifices himself for Peter in the underworld. He's changed a lot. Through this, it's also revealed that Peter's life is empty. He feels purposeless, like there's a void. They are both broken people and they need someone to help them keep themselves happy. As a result of the sacrifice in the underworld, Deadpool suddenly stops looking like a buff Freddy Krueger. Turns out, his demon wife was totally into that, so she stops finding him attractive. And besides losing his stunning looks, Wade has changed in other ways. Spider-Man is making him better, and she's a demon, so she doesn't really like this whole new, improved Wade Wilson. Peter slash Spider-Man is also hurt that Deadpool tried to kill him. He admits he felt like a friend to Deadpool. Deadpool's trying to be good. They make up after Spider-Man becomes Wade's bottom. I'm not... This is not a joke. That this is what he said. I'm quoting. Not fake news. I swear. Literally says I don't even know what this means. They decide to be good guys together. They literally run off into the sunset holding hands. What is this Star Trek? They even spend Christmas together because they're the only people in each other's lives. I mean, let's not forget the sweaters. There are two people who make you custom sweaters, your grandma, and the people who will see you underneath those sweaters. He's Peter's life partner, goddammit. When this crazy spider lady named Itsy Bitsy begins going after them, Deadpool is very staunch on the no killing thing, but in a twist of events, Spider-Man thinks it's the only option. This also stems from the fact that Peter is feeling empty, and like he has no control over his own life. Wade is then confronted with the choice of saving Spider-Man or his marriage, and he chooses to save Peter. He holds him so highly that he would sacrifice anything. This is a fight for Peter's soul. Wade had just found his sense of morality, and he doesn't want to see his hero get his soul tainted. When they're all out of options, Wade chooses to kill Itsy Bitsy, so Peter doesn't have to. He considered his morality the best thing that had ever happened to him, and yet, he threw it away for Spider-Man. Really makes you think. Wow, it's almost like he's in love with Peter. Deadpool says he's finally filled the hole in his life. Nope, joke too easy. Too easy. Peter says that the best thing for that hole is love. Love. Guy love. Guy love. All right, we're done here. When you get to the stage of people filling each other's metaphorical holes, I feel as if I made my point. Deadpool upholds Spider-Man like a god almost. He almost loses his wife over this... friendship. Best friends. Him and his wife end up separating anyways, but that's another story. The comics show them having a deep connection that other people really can't understand. Guys being dudes. Every time Deadpool sees Spider-Man again, 
He instantly starts with the gay jokes and the literal flirting. I can't make it on a couple of high altitude f once or twice a year. He becomes attached to him, becoming dependent on the man who taught him about life and love. Deadpool literally takes breaks from being the merc with the mouth and actually opens up. That's really hard for him. Out of all the people Deadpool has let down and disappointed, and trust me, there are a lot of them, Deadpool only feels remorse for letting Spider-Man down. Wade thought he was able to be worthy of Spider-Man's friendship, and when he let himself down, he actually felt remorse. This is pretty big for Wade. Listen, he could destroy the fate of the universe and not care. For let down Spider-Man? No way. Expect Wade to be eating tears and ice cream for the next three weeks at least. There's an entire story arc about them as old men. It shows that Deadpool is so dependent on Spider-Man that Deadpool wouldn't let Peter die when it was his time to go. Wade gave up some of his healing factor to let Peter live. Even when Peter didn't want to be saved, Peter was ready to die, even revealing his identity as Peter Parker to Wade in his last moments. But Wade needed Peter so much that he went against his wishes and lied about it for years. It's really sad and sweet, and it culminates in them dying together in each other's arms. Even Deadpool's villains know how Peter is his weakness. Okay, listen, this comic is still going on, and the most recent story has to do with Spider-Man and Deadpool raising a robotic child man together. Alright, nope, this is it. Once we're in my two dads territory, I think it's time to pack it up. Okay, let's go. I'm done. I'm done, let's go. This is it. There's no point in making this video. We even get to the point where Spider Man admits him and Deadpool are friends and actually initiates a hug. So, what you're saying is we have two people that become dependent on each other, sacrifice everything for each other, change each other's for the better, flirt with each other regularly, remain in each other's lives forever, and raise a child together? Yes. Mm, nope, not convinced. We did half of that shit last Friday. You're right. Guess I'll die. Wait. Remember, the wedding is on Wednesday. <laughs> Consummation, buddies! Best friends. If you're a frequently practicing queer, you'd know that Deadpool was confirmed to be pansexual a while back. Deadpool's flirtation with various genders has been a running joke in Deadpool, so people have been suspecting it for years. Here are a few examples. Deadpool daydreaming about sensual massages with Cable, calling the male Thor attractive, wanting to date the female Thor, having an on and off relationship with death, the, the genderless concept of death, his love of Russian medals, calling Rob Lowe his dream boy, Spider-Man. So let's just say that Deadpool is very comfortable with all genders, or at least that's what it seems to be. He's also fine with going against gender roles because he likes to make fun of everything. Different writers have different perspectives on the subject. Two people are credited with creating Deadpool. Rob Liefeld and Fabian Nicieza. Nicieza has said, Deadpool is whatever sexual inclination his brain tells him he is in that moment. And then that moment passes. And also, Deadpool's brain cells are in constant flux. He can be gay one minute, hetero the next, etc. All are valid. Which is interesting, maybe. I'm not sure how I feel about that, and I'm not even sure if, you know, like, sexuality works like that, or if people work like that, or if anything really works like that, but we're talking about guys dressing up in spandex to fight crimes, not much is off the table. If this word vomit is true, it may partially explain Deadpool's seeming conflicting interests when it comes to his morals and choosing Spider-Man over his wife. But as we see in the team-up comic, Deadpool remains loyal to Spider-Man for life. Could it be that the only constant thing in Deadpool's life was his love for Peter Parker? Rob Liefeld, when asked about Deadpool's sexuality, has said, When it comes to canon, I I'm not sure if you're gonna get a unanimous consensus on that. I don't believe Marvel has addressed it, and I'm not sure if they will. But as far as canon, that's above my pay grade. And this is coming from the man who had a public freakout when his character Shatterstar was confirmed gay in the comics. This is coming from the guy who said, and I quote, had nothing against gays, because he had a gay family. He's obviously dodging a straightforward answer, but I think that's for a good reason. I don't think he first envisioned Deadpool to be pansexual, but 
he's seen how important it is for people. He said that he was approached by a group of teenagers, I know who you are, thanking him for Deadpool's pansexuality. He says that touched his heart. I think he sort of understands why this is important now. Gail Simone, one of Deadpool's writers, has said, I always thought of Deadpool as pansexual anyways. Another Deadpool writer, Gary Duggan, said, I consider Deadpool to be ready and willing to do anything with a pulse. The movie Deadpool is more explicitly pansexual as the director Tim Miller and star Ryan Reynolds were very adamant about calling Deadpool pansexual. They literally said to quote them on it, so here it is, pansexual Deadpool. What goes on beyond the page and screen is one thing, but what's actually written is another. We see a lot of pansexualish clues in the comics, but to others it's nothing. Now, a lot of people might say that these gay moments in Deadpool are intended to be joking, or that it's not a serious thing. Well, all of Deadpool is a joke, but let's ignore that fact. These people may be right. People acting gay has been seen as a joke to society for, well, a long time. The idea that Deadpool's strong and traditionally masculine adversaries are just the butt of his gay jokes isn't completely off. But we can't dismiss this as all gay jokes. Despite what the writers intend, some of these panels only make sense if Deadpool had non-hetero inclinations. Take the Thor panel, for example. I find you really attractive. What's the joke here? The joke is, Deadpool isn't straight. <laughs> Gay people are so funny with their TV shows and their quiches. Thor isn't the butt of the joke. There might not even be a joke here. And if there is, the joke is, Deadpool finds men attractive. Same gender attraction shouldn't be a joke, but you know what? I'm gonna take what some underpaid starving writer probably meant as an edgy Deadpool quirk and make it into what it should be. Deadpool isn't straight. Peter Parker's sexuality is a little more... not... maybe... questionable? Let me just start with this one thing. Comics are complicated. There is nothing stopping Marvel from literally killing everyone and starting over. They could literally just dismiss another comic and say it's in another alternate universe. Man, I wish someone put me in an alternate universe. So to say that anything is ever set in stone is, is just silly. The number of times Spider-Man has died is probably higher than the number of girlfriends he's had. I feel like when we're talking about a character as famous and rewritten as Spider-Man, it's not about whether he is something, but instead whether he can be something. I'm not going to spend a long time looking for evidence that Spider-Man is oriented towards other genders. It doesn't matter. Steve Rogers is a frickin' Nazi. If you can make Captain America a Nazi, we can talk about Peter Parker's bisexuality. I want everyone for just a second to keep in mind here that when I wrote this, Stan Lee was alive. So, um, rest in peace, I guess. Um, he also, like, wasn't the best, but, you know, he's... He existed. Spider-Man has always represented the underdog. He was the underdog who became a hero to defend the people who needed to be defended. In the 1960s, Stan Lee thought that the underdog was a middle-class white guy who was into nerdy stuff. Sorry, but just based on those characteristics, Peter Parker is probably not an underdog. Guys like Peter Parker in 2018 become Bill Gates or angry internet commentators. The underdogs of this world are probably more low income, not white, not straight, not male, and not cisgender. I'm guessing Stan Lee wrote Peter Parker the way he did because it was easy to sympathize with the everyday teenage white kid because that was what was seen as the norm. That's who he thought was reading these comics. But as time passes on, we need to realize that the people who look up to Spider-Man are much more diverse. If Peter was meant to represent the underdog, maybe he should. Like, actually should. Wouldn't it be nice if LGBTQ plus people had a mainstream character to look up to? Marvel doesn't want it getting out their prized possession is secretly bisexual. Imagine all the angry dude bros who would complain about their interests not being catered to for once. Who cares anyway? Peter Parker's just a glorified furry. So what do you think about their respective sexualities? Will Deadpool and Spider-Man finally get together? Are there other white substances besides web that Spider-Man will spray onto Deadpool? Why are we still ignoring the fundamental flaws of capitalism? Are they gay, pansexual, asexual, or something else? You decide. What's with all the digs of capitalism recently? We're always just reading shit like the Communist Manifesto. I mean, come on, let's go get some better literature like Das Kapital or The Conquest of Bread. 
What are you talking about? Whenever we talk, it's either communism or gay shit. Uh, what? You're holding Chrysanthemum by Kevin Hayes. <laughs> Get this witchcraft out of here! Bring me something wholesome! Like my Patreon supporters! <laughs> Thank you! Thank you to... Harry Gagonis Night Tripping Fairy Isabel Blackwood Alexina Rosalind Wells, Charlotte, Queer Coded, Leon Weigel, Marie. If you'd like to be one of these cool people, consider contributing to my Patreon. And if not, consider checking out my merch at teespring.com slash stores slash r dash they dash. And if not, consider following me on Twitter at are they gay. Instagram, underscore are they gay, underscore, or Tumblr, are they gay videos, dot Tumblr, dot com. Is this doing anything for you? Really? I'm getting off. Ah! That's my asshole! That's, that's my the asshole! That's my asshole! That's my asshole!